You're watching the pageant cast. We have Crescinda to catch 2016's Ms. Canada Globe. And tonight, we talk to her about the pageant herself and her big trip to Asia to compete. That's Crescinda to catch Ms. Canada Globe 2016 tonight on the pageant cast. Welcome to the Pageant Cast, your home for beauty pageant news and interviews on the internet. Hi, I'm Emily Sauer, your 2014 Pure American National Queen in the Miz Division, and you're watching the Pageant Cast with your host, Tim Kretschmann. Hello everybody, this is Tim Crenchman of the Pageant Cast, and we have live on the other side of our Skype stream tonight, Crescinda to catch Ms. Canada Globe 2016. How badly have I been butchering your name so far? Hey, you've been okay. You're staying kind of close. I'm getting close. <laughs> I am, I am so sorry. I I'm glad I'm getting close. That's something yeah, I got. You're not too bad. It's Christina to catch. To catch. To catch. To, to catch. catch. Okay. Now I have to ask you. That's kind of an unusual last name. Is it a? What country is the origin for that? It's Ukrainian, and I think it probably at one time had a to catch up at the end, but it's it's been cut off, and it's to catch. Okay, yeah. Ukrainian. We have a lot of Ukrainians in Milwaukee, so I'm I'm familiar with it, but I still can't spell anything in that language. All right, now we talked about in the past about uh, a lot of the activities that you're involved in, but one of the things, and on top of everything else you're doing, the job and uh, being a community organizer, you're also a single mom. So I'm going to give you a moment that you can brag on uh, on your child Nathan, uh, mm -hmm. particularly if you wish to embarrass him, we love that stuff. So feel free to uh, go hog wild. Mm -hmm. So tell us about your son. Oh goodness, Nathan is seventeen. He's going to be eighteen in April. He's in grade twelve. He is um, he's he's awesome. I don't know what to tell you about him. He's a he's a polite kid. He's got a really good job. He really likes his job. Um, he actually just got back about 20 minutes ago from Fernie and that's his passion. His passion is snowboarding. And so he went with some buddies that he goes every year with uh, their family and, and he does his jumps and he scares me every time. A few years ago, he, <laughs> he dislocated his collarbone. So ever since then, I'm a little nervous when he goes, but he always comes back really, really happy because that's his thing. And then in the fall, he's always waiting. And summer's here. He's always talking about he wishes the snow was here, so that he could be snowboarding. So, I yeah. here I miss him. He's grade twelve, so I'm a little nervous. I just bought him his his suit for grad, and he could have whatever he wanted. I said I didn't care. I just I you know he's gonna leave me in a year or two. I'm thinking unless he decides to stay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know it it. it when you're in a cold weather climate, it's good that you enjoy it because, you know, somebody that's into snowboarding and lives in Florida, you're going to find your opportunities rather limited. Uh, but where you are actually in the warmth, but... Now, did you have decent snow up there this year? Because here in Milwaukee, it, it, it we had it through Christmas and then it stopped the very moment I bought a new pair of snowshoes. And I just went, boop. I, I, I was like, this is the year I do snowshoeing. And then it stopped snowing immediately. <laughs> I, we did have snow this year. Actually, we had quite a bit of snow. And I prefer if you're going to have winter, you need to have snow. It's cleaner and it looks better and it's pretty. Yes. And you have Christmas and you have, you know, you need snow at Christmas time. But I've had Christmas elsewhere. And it never quite feels the same when you don't have the white, the white stuff on the ground. But yeah, I, I don't mind a sunny day. Sunny day in winter is nice. A gloomy day, not so nice. Yeah, you know, and there's something about fresh snow versus the snow that's been out there for a week and has turned black. And there's <laughs> a, all these dirty puddles and 
That's no good. You, you don't no, want that no. stuff. But it's interesting and, you said that about Christmas because I feel the same way. I I have gone to Florida more than once uh, the week after uh, after Thanksgiving. Yeah, the week after Thanksgiving is the quietest for Disney World, everybody. So yeah. I go down there and I hit that. But they have all the you know Christmas displays and all that. And I go, right. this doesn't feel right at all. I should be freezing my tukis off. And by the time we get back home, it, it usually obliges. And it feels like Christmas at that point. But until that happens, it's kind of like, it's it's kind of like watching Die Hard in the summer. It just doesn't feel like Christmas. You have to watch it around <laughs> in December. I don't like, you know, I love spring, but I don't like the mess when all the snow is melting and your vehicle's dirty and your garage is dirty and... You know, you, do, you don't quite know what to wear and you're ruining your leather boots and, you know, because it's mucky. It was like that last week. This week, it's it's a little bit better. So, Absolutely. Now, tell us a little bit about the pageant itself. The the folks watching want to know, uh, it, we probably have people watching that are thinking, should I join the Canada Globe pageant? So what can you tell us about the pageant itself? Well... I, Going to actually Hainan, China was exciting. It was a, a really uh, good experience for me. I went by myself this year. And um, a lot of people asked me if, if, how I felt about that. But I have done a lot of traveling, so it didn't bother me. And I, I, you know, I, I quite enjoyed it. Um, it, was, it was a wonderful experience. I met some really, really amazing women from across the world. I have friends all over the place, as I'm sure Kimberly could say. Um, that's, that's the part that I valued the most. We did a lot of, um, I think a lot of people think when you when you go, I knew I was going to have work to do when I got there. And you definitely do. You're there to get ready for a big show. Um, uh, the publicity there is huge. Pageantry in China is a lot different than pageantry in Regina, Saskatchewan. Um, you know, I came back and not everybody even knew that it was on, you know, whereas in China, the cab drivers knew who I was and, really? you know, people were stealing your posters and doing all kinds of things. So yeah, it, it was a different world for sure. Well, I, the only part is sad is you don't really get to see China much because you're so busy. Oh yeah. You know? That's gotta be a whirlwind. Now, how long were you over there? I was there two weeks. Wow. Yeah, two weeks. Wow. Yeah. But you so had to rehearse, I'm guessing, like crazy, right? Rehearse every day. Yeah, yeah, every day you rehearsed. Yeah, you you got up in the morning, you had breakfast, and you were gone. We had a different hotel that we went to, so we rehearsed in like four-inch heels for sometimes eight hours a day. And then you'd come back and you'd shower and get ready, and then you'd have to look all pretty in your gown and go to an event. So you're pretty tired. Well, if, if, by, the end, by the end of the two weeks, I actually felt... You know, it became almost like uh, a Spartan race where you're on the last leg and you're so exhausted. Yeah. And it's all power of the mind and getting through because your body is tired. Yeah, but you're like in outstanding shape. So you, this should not have been a big deal for you, right? Well, I mean, I think, like I said, you're tired. Your mind is tired and you start to kind of, you know, I don't know. Your it, friendships kind of get you each other. The girls kind of keep you going and you support yeah. each other. And, you know, that was the big part. There was no um, cattiness or anything like that. You never saw that there. It was it was very nice. Now, what's the biggest surprise about China that, that you had while you were out there? What was the thing that you went, oh, I I didn't realize this about, about China? Hmm. Well, I have been in Asia a few times, so I wasn't completely surprised with being um, being there. But uh, I think it was probably the food. I knew the food was going to be a challenge. And so um, I did take some things with me, like protein bars. And I, I took just like the powdered protein, different things to kind of, if I needed it, which kind of ran out after about 10 days. And then I had to <laughs> go to the, you know, to their diet. Um, I think everybody lost probably on average 10 pounds while they were there because I, I know I was worried about my gown spitting at the end for the actual competition. I was, you know, thinking I was going to have to pin them and stuff. So maybe it was that. I knew the food would be different. It wasn't terrible. It was just, it was different. Last time you didn't know what it was. 
And so, um, well, and that's not comfort uh, food at that point, right? Comfort, when when you're not comfortable with it. And ketchup chips for some reason. <laughs> All yeah. right, and um, let's. Why don't you look right into that camera? And if somebody was to ask you directly, why should I compete at Globe Canada? What what would you tell them? You know, what my experience this year has been has um, it's the networking and the meeting um, great, great people in my community. It gave me a platform to use my voice to to support a lot of things that I really believe in um, as far as the charity work that I like to do. Um, it, it You have to, I think you can do what you want with it. You, you can do nothing and you can just wear a crown and wear your banner and go to the odd event, or you can try to make a difference. And I think that for me, that's what I wanted to do. I really wanted to put myself out there this year. I, I did eight to nine events throughout the year. Um, so I put a lot of work into it and I'm proud of what I've done. And I think that personally, um, it's been a year of growth for me. And, and I hope that whoever chooses or whoever does get the crown, um, chooses to do the same, just really grow and learn about themselves and, and contribute to their communities because that's really um, a great opportunity for you if you were to to even just be um, Miss Regina was that for me, being Miss Regina Glow before being Miss Canada. It, it, it really did um, kind of give me the platform, you know, to to support a lot of things, so... Well, they were lucky to have you as a representative, and you did a great job. Now, you mentioned some of the appearances. Uh, what type of appearances did you participate in this year? I, between going, um, in the beginning, I did uh, the Lady in Red event. That was my first year last year. And then I went to a ton of events. I went to the everything from uh, the Premier's Golf Ball, which was for Sophia House as well. I went to... Bow ties and sweethearts, which was for a number of charities. I went, you know, I just tons and tons of events. That any event that um, kind of came up for hospitals or women and children or those sorts of things, I went to. Uh, I, I don't even. I've lost num account on how many I went to. I enjoyed it. Um, there is an expense to it, and I think that you need to be prepared for that as going into the globe. It's not, if you do want to do a lot with it or attend a lot of events, it is expensive. So you need to keep that in mind, and I think you need to be prepared for um, fundraising and that sort of things, because otherwise it could be pretty tough, um, especially for a single mom. But so. it's it's a once in a lifetime type of once opportunity, and Absolutely. that's yeah. that's and what you have, have to, to wait it. against. No, there's been a lot. I would say um, a lot of great friendships that I've built. A lot of um, I actually believe that after this year, I'll be looking at going on a committee. I'm actually being a part of of Sophia House, which I would like to be a part of Sophia House more on a on a, a long term basis. Um, yeah, and you know what? I've I've had the opportunity to network um, different places to get. For example, I was able to get a hotel to to get cheaper mattresses for Sophia House, and and just last week I networked with one lady that was able to get women's products, and she knew where they had them at a different place, and I called that shelter, and I was able to hook them up, and so it's it's about. Um, you know, just keeping your eyes and ears open on how you can help people. A lot of people don't do that. I know when I called even, they said, and who are you? And I said, you know, I'm nobody. I'm just somebody trying to collect, connect the dots so that um, these people can get what they need because it was just sitting there, you know. So it's just stuff like that, and it's empowering. It feels really good to do that. That's fantastic. I was thinking as you were talking about some of your appearances and things that you did that you being – in the medical profession, uh, going to a hospital is not unusual for you, but you got to portray a different role this time uh, mm -hmm. when, when you have the crown and the sash on. So yeah. That's that's got to be that's got to be a lot. So of it, it was wonderful talking to you about the pageant, and one of the things I want to see is your best pageant wave. And oh, this boy. time I'm going to set this stage for you because last time I think I threw you in cold. You are sitting on the back of a Corvette. 
There is a fur laid out across the back of the Corvette, so you're nice and comfortable. And you are looking on both sides trying to do your pageant wave to those people that are assembled. So, okay, let's see it. There it is. Wonderful. And somehow the entire car turns with her as, as she's... <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, let's uh, let's say Tierra dreams to everybody. Until next time, Tierra dreams. We just announced not too long ago that we had an app in the Android Play Store. Well, now we are in the Apple App Store as well. That's right, now you can get a Pageant Cast app in the two major mobile phone marketplaces in the Google Play Store and now in the Apple App Store. You can check out the Pageant Cast and its award winning website. All the features that are there are here. Uh, connections to our Facebook and Twitter accounts and lots more. You'll want to check it out immediately at the links that are somewhere in our show notes or somewhere nearby or just do a search on Pageant Cast. We're the only thing that comes up as that app, surprising as that may be. Please download us and rate us today and we would love to hear from you what you think about our app. Hope you enjoy it, the Pageant Cast app. Ooh.